Hello folks, welcome to Tuxedo OS 3 Plasma Desktop 6.1.4 and you can see my hardware here. Uh, today I'm going to talk a little bit about software. So uh, there's a lot of new users that are well new to the Linux world. They're maybe coming from Microsoft and checking out Plasma Desktops and Tuxedo is a pretty easy ride. And I'll talk a little bit about the distribution, um, show you a website where you can get it. And more importantly, I'll talk about three ways to install software and maybe some descriptions to go with that as far as what type of software, because there is a couple of different categories if you're not familiar with that. This video is geared toward new users, by the way, folks. So I'm gonna use DistroWatch to give you information about Tuxedo. All right, I don't use the popularity factor whatsoever, but I do like the way they lay things out. So uh, Tuxedo OS is theoretically listed as a beginner's category and for new folks. All right, nobody likes that word, but more importantly, it's, it's very easy on the eyes and easy to learn. And it will grow with you also. You can also test drive it. That's what a live medium means. You uh, burn that onto a DVD if you have a DVD burner or you can put it on a USB stick or thumb drive. All right, it is a Debian and Ubuntu based system. That's how the packaging is done. The software packaging. LTS just means long term support. They're out of Germany. They only offer one desktop. And that's the Plasma desktop. Their website is tuxedocomputers.com. OK, so basically I'm going here and uh, we can you know, check out their web page and then download. Again, tuxedocomputers.com if you're interested. I'm pulling that down and closing. Just one of my little tips. Subscription key is in the corner. I have well over 400 videos and I have a couple of ones on Tuxedo as far as what's new and miniature um, tour and overview. The, I discuss the menus and stuff like that. Today I'm gonna to talk about software. There are three different ways you can install software on Tuxedo. There's the Discover Software Store, Synaptic, Package Manager, and Terminal. We'll start with the favorite, that little shopping bag thing called, well, the Software Store. And um, Discover 6.1.4. So this is a Plasma version 6. Now, where's the stuff coming from? Well, the stuff is coming from these locations. A lot of you folks may not be familiar with FlatHub or what Flatpak software is to begin with. Again, this video is geared toward newer users, especially users that are coming from the Microsoft world and uh, using Tuxedo. Now, FlatHub.org is used by many Linux distributions. And a lot of people actually prefer Flatpak software. Well, what is the thing about Flatpak software? It's software that is self-contained. It downloads in a, usually a big package, a big chunk, and then you install it and it takes up quite a bit of space, but it runs in a sandboxed environment. It uh, doesn't need much from your system at all. And a lot of appeal about Flatpak software is just that, that it runs in a container. So that is in a nutshell how Flatpak software is uh, organized and it can be ran on several Linux distributions. As a matter of fact, a lot of Linux distributions use flathub.org. I mean, uh, quite a few. All right, now let's get back on to Tuxedo. Well, Tuxedo's um, software is coming from these locations here. So the Discover Software Center or Software Store, if you wanna call it that, contains Flatpak software. So if we go to the home page, for instance, and uh, are you interested in something similar to Photoshop? I use this pretty heavily. All of my thumbnails on my 430 plus videos on my YouTube site are done with this software. Now here's a couple of screenshots for you. All right, so you can see that it's coming from two different little, uh, places that I can download this. Flatpak Central Repository, which is Flathub, and then Ubuntu Jammy Universe. All right, either way, you can do that. Different categories, plasma add-ons, where the software is coming from, 
And that's pretty much in a nutshell. Now, a lot of you folks are brand new and you kind of want to shy away from using Synaptic. My um, advice to you is get familiar with it. There is a help file for this. You will need to put your password right up front when you uh, do this. There is a big universe there. 91,424 packages are listed in here, but no flat pack. So that means your little blue bag over here has a lot more, the Discover Software Center. So a lot of people have always stated in the past, there's not a lot of software for Linux. I beg to differ. Uh, Linux is used in quite a few devices nowadays. And what I mean by that is not only computers. But uh, more importantly, um, let's get back on topic and talk about software. So out of that 91,424, I'm sure you can find a thing or two. You can do that by searching it by name, description, and other stuff. Okay, there's lots of ways to search. Let me just take the top one here. It's a, it's a game. So if I click that, I can, uh, if I click the screenshot, and some things have screenshots and some things do not. And um, I'm downloading the screenshot and that's what that screenshot looks like. So we can uh, certainly take a peek at some of them, but don't expect screenshots from everything. So we have common information. Who is maintaining this? It's lit up in blue. And then what is it dependent on? These are called dependencies. That means that it needs other things. Currently, they're not installed because the legend up here has a blank, which is not installed. So if it were installed, you would see file locations in here. To give you an example of installing this one, you would click that, mark it, and if it requires other packages to make it work, you mark those also. Like with Flatpak software, it downloads everything inside the container. And that's why those downloads are usually big. But the, this particular one requires this other stuff. So you will have to mark that if it's not currently installed. Hopefully that made sense. I'm going to walk over to status and hit install. So now you can see the boxes are all green. So let's look at the icon legends. Now, Synaptic Package Manager is also available on other Debian-based systems, and these legends are different as far as colors are concerned. So I would always, if you are a uh, distro hopper, is to go ahead and look at those. But anyways, that one's self-explanatory pretty much. Green is installed. So if I take a look at the description for the accounting service, let's see if it even has a screenshot. It does not. So again, you don't have screenshots on everything, but it does give me other information like um, who the maintainer is, what version, what the size is, a latest, and what is it depending on? Well, in this case, it's not very many things, but it still depends on something. And now you can see the installed files on where they are located on your system. Maybe too much information for some. But you get a wealth of information nonetheless. Okay. Again, it's pretty simple to install anything. Click, mark it. If it needs more goodies, mark that also. And then hit apply. This one right here. Same thing with removals. Uh, if I were to... Uh, if it was installed, you can see mark for complete removal or just mark for removal. That means it normally leaves a remnants of files. And if you don't want that and you want to absolutely get rid of all of it, complete removal is usually your better option. All right. Now, this option here, sometimes on, on different synaptic package managers, is unchecked. I usually check that and the reason for that is that way I get these selectors down here. Otherwise you can just right click on the file and hit properties and then you can see these. Okay. Keep in mind this one is not installed because the box is well clear. It's not green. 
All right, so there's a lot of things in here, and you have a help file also, F1. And these are all clickable. All right, again, I'm doing this video because there's a lot of new folks out there just starting to use this. And, uh, but don't shy away from um, this one here. So I'm going to close that. You can certainly, as you grow with any Linux distribution, now, being that this is a plasma desktop, it's always listening. In other words, it's waiting for you to type. I'm going to type in KO, and that's console, and hit enter, if you're not aware of that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put in INXI dash big F XE. And what does that do? It's just going to give me complete system information. So up here, it's actually gathering data right now. And when it finishes, <laughs> it's quite it's quite extensive. It's using a 6.8 series kernel. Again, this is KDE Plasma version 6.1.4, Tuxedo OS 3, based on 2204 Jammy. In Ubuntu, in other words. Long-term support. Your motherboard is listed here if you ever wondered how to do this kind of stuff. And you can see my CPU and the graphics card I'm using today is an AMD Radon RX 580. And then you can take a look at your audio network, Bluetooth drives, partitions, and all that good stuff. Typing in exit. And more importantly, thank you for watching.